I, I would like to gather our thoughts around a, a very special verse found in Psalms. Psalm 122, verse 1. I rejoice with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. That's a great verse of Scripture. And, and for, the, for the man who was writing this Scripture, it was David, and he was remembering the special times he had had whenever he gathered with God's people in the temple area on the Temple Mount, and he is celebrating um, those special occasions when we gather around the Lord on his day. And I am so blessed to be here with you, my church family, today, and I'd like to ask the Lord to bless our time together. So let's begin with a prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for this church family. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity that is ours to experience your presence in our lives, to experience friendship with one another. Lord, some of these folks we've known for a long time and others we have just recently met, but we're all family because of who you are. And we pray, Lord, today that your presence would be such that we would grow in, in our awareness of the opportunity that is ours because we are the promised people of God. So thank you for what's going to happen in this place today. And we ask, Lord, most of all, that you would be glorified in all that is said and all that is done. May our eyes turn to Jesus because we've had this time together. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Heaven thunder. The world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you form. Faith commanded and the mountains move. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Y'all sing that chorus with us. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Next verse. Freedom conquered, all our chains undone. Sin defeated, Jesus has overcome. Mercy triumph when the third day dawned. Darkness was denied when the stone was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. If you believe that this morning, y'all sing these words. Nothing is too hard for him. Nothing is impossible. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Many of you believe that this morning. If 
impossible things can be done by him. Amen. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. We're going to sing that again. Y'all sing it with us. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I have. Sing those words. Lord, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. God, I'm running. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways, I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. God, I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. One more time. Till I am a soul on fire. the love of Jesus there's no need to fear y'all sing these words with us when darkness tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I know when brokenness and pain is all I know oh, I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Amen. Next verse. Shame no longer has a place to hide. I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. No, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Let's worship Him. My fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear. Doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Yeah, yeah. There's power. There's power that can break. 
break off every chain. There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. Sing that again. There's power that can break off every chain. Yeah, there's power that can empty out a grave. Oh, there's resurrection power that can save. Power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Everybody sing that last chorus with us. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your Back in January, we presented Ron and Becky with a gift in honor of their 30 years. And uh, this morning, we would like to officially just pause and recognize their service to our church for that period of time. Um, we've asked them to move down here with their family. Um, two reasons. Number one, for 25 years, Becky's been my friend, and I want her to remain to be my friend, so I didn't want her being up here. And the last time I was up here and I talked to him face to face, I blubbered the whole time that I was trying to talk to him. So I thought it would be easier if uh, they sat down and I could kind of look at everybody this morning. Um, but you know what? I've been sitting up there and my heart been, was pounding out of my chest. And I said, you know what? A day like this is meant for a little emotion. So I think God realizes that. And I looked out and I saw Leon and Angela and the tears started already. <laughs> Love you. Um, Leon was the on that original pulpit committee back in 1988, and our church was in a time of transition. The Mobleys had moved on, been called to another church, and enter Ron and Becky Bauer. A little reluctant at first, came to candidate, didn't think that this was going to be their next calling. Well, guess what it was for the next 30 years and counting. Um, you know, it's been said many times that when God sets out to do something, 
He doesn't do it with events or circumstances. He does it with people. And that's certainly been the case here. God wanted to do a great thing in our church over these last 30 years. And look at what he's done. Look around you. Look at what he's done. And it's because of you people that came and followed that call. At this time, we're going to play a short video. And I'm going to gather myself and then have a few more comments. Because this, I love him. Because he is our pastor at our church. Because he, ta he taught me more stuff about God. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met and he just, he's very encouraging. His message brings a word and I like that. Because he's been um, at this church since I was born and I just really love him and he's a good pastor. He's always here for you no matter what and he's been my pastor since I was born. Because he's always been there and he's always helped me through life. He was actually the pastor who helped me understand that I was actually faithful to God. He's always kind and he likes to um, like kind of be silly sometimes. I love Brother Ron because he's our pastor and he teaches us a lot about God. He makes you feel at home in the church. Because he's a good pastor and he teaches about Jesus. I say my best friend. Hey Ron and Becky. We're so excited that you're celebrating your 30th anniversary in Sumter. And it's awesome to think back and have so many memories of all the ways that God has used you because you were willing to serve. We think about our time with you in Sumter and those were some of the most awesome ministry experiences that we have, have had in our ministry. I uh, am thankful because you weren't only a, uh, a pastor to us, but you were great friends to us and continue to be to this day. And I learned so much from you, Brother Ron, in, in ministry and how to be a pastor. And I, I know that it's because God used you to show me and others how, how to serve and love others. So again, congratulations. Happy anniversary. We love you. We wish we could be there. But we know that this is going to be an awesome experience for you. God bless. Hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm coming to you right now from Charleston, South Carolina. I really wish that I could be there in person, but I'm also super excited that I get to celebrate and share in this wonderful occasion and this wonderful day. If you don't know, my name is Sam Sanders. I was the worship leader there at FCG from about, from about 2007 until about 2013. And when I reflect on that time at FCG, it was probably one of the most significant times in my ministry and in my life. There are so many qualities that I learned from Pastor Ron, from, from watching him, observing him, and from being under his leadership. If I could challenge you at all, I would say this. Spoil the mess out of Pastor Ron today. Man, he deserves it. 30 years, 30 years, that is just incredible. 30 years of ministry at one church, that is, a, that is evidence of, of an incredible leader. And you guys have one of the best. So Pastor Ron, if I could um, challenge you at all today, I would say if there's any chairs right now that are out of line, just don't worry about it. <laughs> this is just that one day where you can uh, just relax, have fun, and just enjoy this moment and let these people love on you and um, spoil you. I love you so much, man, and I'm just honored that I was able to share today. Love you guys. Y'all have a wonderful day. God bless you. I think there's a common denominator there, friend. Did you hear that word? Um, I was telling Michael and Devin before the service, we were over there talking. I was talking about all the significant events that you guys have been a part of in my life. You know, baptized my children, baptized me, married Allison and I 25 years ago. He was Juan Bauero then, though. He had a little dark mustache and looked a little Latino. <laughs> that was his alter ego. Um, we Alice and I directed Matt and Christie's wedding. Who thought that was a good idea at the time? Um, we love you so much. And, and just think, guys, 
especially those of you who've been here for a long period of time, think back on the families. Um, we always say whether you're here for a, a service, a season, or a lifetime, um, think of the impact that this family has had on families across the world. Being in a military town like this, sometimes, you know, it's a year, five years. Think back on some of those families that, you know, because of the ministry at this place, God sits at the head of their table every night. Think of the staff that is now shepherding their own flocks, um, the associates. I mean, it's just incredible, the, the outreach. And I just want you to sit back and really kind of drink that in for a moment, the impact that 30 years of ministry has had. It's incredible. It really is. So today, do let us spoil you a little bit. Um, on behalf of myself, this church, the hundreds of people that the lives that you've touched that couldn't be here in person today, a very heartfelt thank you. You always had that motto, to know him and to make him known. And that's been your ministry. It's as simple as that. So, thank you. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to
Waking up to a new sunrise Looking back from the other side I can see now with open eyes Darkest water in deepest pain wouldn't trade it for anything Cause my brokenness brought me to you And these wounds are a story you'll use So I'm thankful for the scars Cause without them I wouldn't know So forever I am thankful for the scars. Now I'm standing in confidence with the strength of your faithfulness. And I'm not who I was before. No, I don't have to fear anymore. So I'm thankful for the scars. Because without them, I wouldn't know your heart. And I know they'll always tell of who. So forever I am thankful for the scars. I can see, I can see how you delivered me in your hands, in your feet. I found my victory. I can see, I can see how you delivered me in your hands in your feet i found my victory i'm thankful for your scars because without them i would know your heart and with my life i'll tell of who you are so forever i am thankful i'm thankful for the scars because without them i wouldn't know your heart and i know they'll always tell of who you are so forever So forever I am thankful for the scars. There are times when something happens in our lives and we can't explain it. There are no words enough to describe the presence that we feel, the, the, sa the saving presence we feel, the healing presence we feel, the delivering presence we feel. But we all know those moments when, when Jesus reaches in and He touches us and we know that we have been touched by His almighty hand. And we long for the words that would perfectly describe to others what it is that we've just experienced in that divine encounter with none other than Jesus. But words, they're never enough. And there are times in all of our lives, even those of us who are not quick to to shed a tear. There are times in our lives when tears become that language, when words are not enough and, and, and you experience His presence and you know that you're experiencing His presence and you just can't even say anything, but your eyes well up as your spirit wells up. And someone has said uh, appropriately, tears are a language. There are times when you just 
you can't find the word, but someone looks upon your face and they know. They know something's happened. And the time will come when, when words will follow. But in that moment, you, you can't explain it because you don't even understand it. But you know it's real. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives in my heart. And sometimes he catches me off guard in his appearance. Sometimes it's in a moment that I, I wasn't expecting it, and he shows up, Jesus shows up, and I know it's him. Listen, listen to these words from 2 Corinthians if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. And this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. There came a day in my life when Jesus reached in and I was transformed from a confused teenager to a teenager who was on a mission to do whatever I could do to help people come to experience the grace that I had experienced in a moment as Jesus reached into my, my life. One minute, completely confused about life, the next minute, forgiven and redeemed, living with a purpose reconciled to God, in right relationship with God because of what Jesus had done on the cross and because of what he was doing in my life in that very moment in Roanoke, Virginia in 1970. And then he called me to ministry. I didn't know anything about ministry. I knew, I knew what my pastor was like and, and he had a real influence in my life. I like the fact that when he stood and preached that you felt he was preaching the Bible, not just his opinions. And I, and I was drawn to that, even though Christianity was very new for me. I had I'd observed it in my grandparents and in some of my aunts and uncles, but now it was personal. And, and I felt that when he stood and he taught and he preached that it was God's Word he was bringing to us. And I liked that. But I also liked that on Sunday afternoons, we would play football in the yard where the parsonage was located, and he was always there in the mix. I remember one day, one Sunday afternoon, we were playing ball. I was a junior in high school at that time, and um, I don't know exactly what happened, but the next thing I knew, I was waking up. I hit the ground, and it knocked me out, and when I woke up, Pastor Towers was right there in my face. Are you okay? Are you okay? And he was that presence as long as he lived. He's in heaven now. But as long as he lived, he was that presence who was always following up with me. Are you good? Um, everything okay? I would call him when I had a question about something. He would give me guidance, and, and he was just that presence. And so what I saw in him, I thought, I want to be to people what Pastor Towers has been to me. I, I, I want to care about people. Um, I want to be a friend to people. I, I want to be a bridge for people. I, I want Jesus to live in me in such a way that somehow, some way, God could just take an ordinary Virginia boy like me and give me the opportunity to be a vessel through which his light can shine. I'm reconciled because of Jesus. I didn't save myself. I, I I am a product of His grace. I am reconciled because of God's love for me, but then God said, I want you to talk about people, about my desire for them to be reconciled to me. 
went to school, ended up in Columbia, South Carolina, and Brother Jackson said something to me in those early years that did not really register with me until later on, not the full impact of what he was saying. He said, in, remin in ministry, remember to do this, love God and love the people. And honestly, I was 24 when he said that to me. I would just gotten my degree in pastoral ministry, and my, my gut response to that was, duh. <laughs> really? You've been in ministry for 30 years, and you're going to tell me to love God and love people? Come on, you don't have something better than that? I've been in ministry 30 years now. If you want to be used of God and seeing people reconciled to, to Him through Christ, love God and love people. It's the most profound thing, perhaps, that has ever been spoken to me about ministry. And I had the opportunity to watch Him for 10 years in Columbia. He retired, but he was still there, still very active in the church. I watched him for 10 years love God and love people. And I still didn't get it. Not really. I moved to Sumter. They invited me back for homecoming, and I went for homecoming. And I stood at the back door of the Columbia sanctuary, First Church of God, and hundreds of people walked out and shook my hand, and not one of them quoted back to me a line from a message I had preached. Not one of them said, man, I'll never forget that Wednesday night that you taught on such and such a scripture, and you said, but I'm telling you, one person after another walked out and said, I'll never forget when you were there with us at the hospital when mama died. I'll never forget, I'll never forget, I'll never forget, and every one of them were bearing witness to opportunities that God had given me to be with people in the middle of their lives. That is the ministry of reconciliation. Loving people with the love that God has poured out in our lives in such a way that it spills over and it touches them. And it might be a word spoken, or it may be a prayer that was given, but most of all, it's a presence that was realized. And I was reading a book just the other day, and the person in the book said that ministry is not about perfection, it's about presence. And I, I reflected on it, and I thought, you know, Lord, I believe that because I, I, I can honestly say in the years that I've been in Sumter, particularly in the years in Sumter, maybe not so much in Columbia, because I'm not sure that in those early years I, I really understood the dynamic of what God had called me to. In, in Columbia, I was sure that I could come up with a system that would allow ministry to be administrated perfectly so that it, it would be unbelievable how people would respond to the message of Christ. I, I was working on the organizational side of ministry. If we do this and we do it this way, this is the outcome that we can expect. And so I, I strove to, to develop systems of ministry that would be most effective. And there was a shift when I came to Sumter. And you, you are largely responsible for this shift. Because you were not an organization, you were a family. And back in those days, there, there was a lot of family at First Church. I, I came to find out that when somebody said Aunt Bessie, it was not just affectionately Aunt Bessie, it was Aunt Bessie. A lot of people were related to, to Bessie Pritchard, Bessie McLeod Pritchard. And, and there was a lot of family, but that family orientation started to mold me and change me and adjust my perception to what it was that, that God wanted me to give myself to. And more and more it became apparent to me that God was not asking me to be perfect as a pastor. He was asking me to be present as a friend. 
to allow my heart to be broken alongside of you, to allow my heart to rejoice with you in your times of rejoicing, to be there as much as as possible. Nobody can even perfectly be there, but presence, being present. And then God's Word and His Spirit started to press in my life in such a way that I understood that this being present was was all about availability. It was not about my ability. It was about His presence as I made myself available as, as, his, as His servant in the midst of people. I'm thankful that God blessed me to be able to come to a church where I could pursue ministry from a biblical perspective rather than a business model perspective. And y'all, there are a lot of business models of ministry out there. And there are a lot of places that have, have a well-mechanized system in place that is gathering lot, a lot larger groups than we have here this morning. But I am afraid that time and eternity will show that much of what's happening there is on the human plane and not the divine plane. Corinthians, Paul talks about in the day when Christ returns, ministries will be proven to be of silver, gold, and precious metals or of wood, hay, and stubble. I have been blessed to be in a church that cares about having a ministry that is gold and silver and precious stones in the sight of God. A church that understands that Ministry is messy. It's never perfect. Because just when you think you have ministry figured out, someone walks in the door from a direction that you've never encountered before in life. And then God shows you all over again, just love me and let me love them through you. Love God. Love people. Be present. You're not perfect. Be available. You're not able. But if you'll be available, watch what I do. And so it's not a class that perfectly disciples people. It's not a system that is able to preclude all of the challenges of life. It's just being the people of God within the context of the relationships that He's given us. I remember in the early years, we just felt like, I say my, my early years here, we just felt like a group of us we ought to have a visitation night. I mean, churches that are reaching people have a visitation night. We ought to have a visitation night. And it was way back in the early years, and Rick, Melvin, and I, we worked it out. We, we planned and, and pulled some folks together, and here's what we're going to do. And on Monday nights, we're going to follow up the people who have visited, and, and this, is, this is how we're going to do it. And, and so sure enough, we had a group of people that were excited about that and bought into it. And... Um, Man, it looked so good on paper. It really did. And after a few weeks, we were like, we haven't accomplished anything. We're going to people's homes, and uh, either they weren't ready for a visit or they're not home. And all of our man-made efforts, uh, the things churches do if they care about reaching people and if they care about growing in number, we, we were attempting to do all those things, and it didn't fit. It didn't work. And then there was this fella who started coming to church, and he reached 17 of his neighbors and brought them to church with him. And some of y'all are still here today. And 
this fella and his wife went with us on the Holy Land trip we just went on. And all they did was they just reached out to their neighbors and said, Hey, you ought to come to church with us. They didn't know who I was, and that didn't matter. And they didn't know who the church was, really, and that didn't matter. But all they knew is that their neighbor really wanted them to come to church. And so they came. Mark and Robin, stand up. There's two of them. How many years y'all been here now? Over 20 years? Um, Jill and Aaron, would y'all stand up? They're probably, there we go. Where's Jill? How many years? 20? Now, they didn't live in the neighborhood, but a neighbor of the fella that brought Mark and Robin brought Aaron's boss and his and her husband to church, and then Jazz reached out to Aaron, and then they came to church, and now Jill is on staff here at First Church of God as minister to the young adults part-time. And on and on the story goes, and here's the deal. Love God. And love people. And you've let me, you've paid me to do that. It, Tucker, it don't get no better than that, buddy. Do you feel God's call? Leon King would come out of church because, and he would say, you know what? You work on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. Man, you have got it made. And I said, and y'all pay me so good to do those two things. I am blessed. Christy had a friend come home with her after school when Christy was like in the fifth grade, and the, and the little girl said, what does your dad do all week? And Christy said, my dad is the preacher, and we lived in the parsonage, and so Christy pointed and said, my dad is the preacher of that church. Yeah, but what does he do on all those other days that he's not, he's not there on Sunday? And um, boy, the list goes on and on, but it, go, it comes right back to this. Lord, help me to, to know you and then help me to have a relationship with someone today that will give them the opportunity to know that you love them too. Help me care about them, Lord, the way you care about them and somehow shine through the imperfections of my life in such a way that they'll be drawn to you. It's not a program. It's not a system. It's relationships. And you've let me live that life for these years, and I thank you so much. And I'm thankful to God for, for giving me the blessed opportunity of coming to Sumter. Now, a common question these days. You're not going anywhere, are you? Well, here, I'm going to give you the, the, just the straight-up honest answer. When I came here, I told the Lord, Lord, I'll stay a lifetime if you want me to, but I'll leave tomorrow if you want me to. I only want to be here because you want me here. Because if I'm here for any other reason, it's not doing you any good and it's not doing me any good. My answer is the same. The day that I wake up and I know that God is saying, it's time, you will be the first to know. I'll show up at church one week and I'll just honestly say, folks, this has been amazing, but God has put in my heart that it's time for me to move so that he can bring in the next person that he's wanting to use to lead this, this ministry and, and to be with this family. You'll be the first to know. I don't know that yet. I don't have a date set. I'm going to take Social Security when I'm 66. That'll be a year from this, no, this November. This November, I'm going to sign up for Medicare. Um, but beyond that, I can't give you the answer. Now, I, and I've, I've told you this before, and it's the truth. 
There's two ways I'll go. One is God will say it's time, and I'll tell you that, that my time has come, and then we'll, we'll begin the transition of handing off the baton. Or I'll show up one Monday, and my key won't work, <laughs> and Iris won't answer the door, and I see her car, and she won't answer the phone. So I don't know. Um, right now I'm here, but I could be gone tomorrow because it's in God's hands. Because ministry is not a job. It's a relationship. And my prayer today is that everybody here, that you can say, I know Jesus as my Savior and Lord, and it is well with my soul. If you cannot say that, but you're interested in knowing more about that, I'm here for you. I mean that. All you got to do is call me or walk up to me today and say, hey, can we talk? Because I want to tell you the, the single most life-changing experience that anyone can have is to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. Not just as a historical figure, but as the one who has walked into our lives to be a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Jesus is amazing. Amen? Father, this morning, Help us to be present. We're never going to be perfect. Help us to be available. We're never going to be able to do all the things that need to be done in the lives of people, real people. But Lord, you're always enough. And I pray that every one of us here today would take full advantage of the opportunity to be reconciled, to be brought into friendship with God because you are willing not to hold our sins against us and sent Jesus to save us, to redeem us from all that threatened to destroy us. Lord, as I speak these words, there are people here this morning they don't understand what I'm talking about, but Lord, they know in their hearts they feel something. And that something they feel is you. Because you love us. And you've got good things for us. And all you're asking is that we would make our hearts available to your indwelling presence. Lord, I'm available. And I want to be present for the people that you're calling me to come alongside of this week. I don't know what I'll say. I don't know what I'll do. But I have found, Lord, if I'm willing to be present, You'll do what goes beyond what we could ever express with words. Thank you. Thank you for this church. Thank you for 30 years to be in fellowship with such amazing people. Amen.
Love of heaven. 